What is an equilibrium constant? In my previous video, I went over what is chemical equilibrium. And at the end, I went over the fact that if you took your product concentrations, once you've reached equilibrium from a reversible reaction, and you divided it by your reactant concentration, you get Kc, which is sometimes off to the side, and then there will be some numerical value for this reaction. Now, more than that, you have to know that the brackets mean concentration, and when you have a balanced chemical equation, these coefficients are important in writing this law of mass action. So you put your product concentration, which would be C, but then you raise it to the power of the coefficient. You do the same thing, you multiply that by the concentration of D, whatever that product D is, to the power of its coefficient, and then you divide it by the concentration of your reactant, in this case A, raised to the power of A, and B raised to the power of B. And that is the shortened version of the law of mass action without any proof. That is how we calculate an equilibrium constant. Now, if we have these reversible reactions and they reach equilibrium, there are three kind of set positions that these can have. They could land with an equilibrium constant that's fairly equal to one. And what that means is your product concentration is fairly equal to your reactant concentration. I'm just gonna try to draw those like about the same size, okay, like same font size. You might wanna write down that, you know, these two are fairly equal. So I'm just gonna go like R is approximately the same as P, meaning the reactant and product concentration. Now, what about if the K value is large? So think about that just mathematically. How do we get a very large or even a really, really large K value? So over here, the number that's sitting here, what if it's like 10, 100 times 10 to the 15th? Um, that's gonna happen because your product concentration, so I'm gonna write this really big product and try not to do any spelling mistakes. I had a few in the last video. And then divided by your, I'm just gonna go really little reactant like that. So this is where your product concentration is greater than, and maybe it's much greater than your reactant concentration. So you get this fairly sizable K value above one, never a negative number in any of these cases. All right, how about the last one? What if it's less than one? So that just means that once you've reached equilibrium with your reversible reaction, your forward and reverse rate are the same, concentrations are staying the same. It just means that once you've reached equilibrium, your, your product concentration is really kind of low or small, and then your reactant concentration is really large, reactant, okay. So again, you might wanna put reactant here is much greater or maybe even a lot greater than your product concentration. Now, we did talk about, or I talked about factors that affect the reaction rate. You must have a specific temperature. So these K values are um, constant, okay? But only for a specific temperature, so a specific T temperature um, for that reaction. And if you did more with even kinetics with what are called uh, rate constants, the equilibrium constant is a ratio of what are the rate constants. But if you haven't gone over rate, you know, rate constants or kinetics, you can just say that you know, equilibrium is basically the forward and the re reverse reaction um, divided by each other, okay? So they're only specific to a specific temperature. So yeah, they are constant, okay? So keep in mind, these are a constant, but they're only constant at a specific, I'm gonna put at a specific T, at a specific temperature. All right, let's look at a specific example. Here we go. So let's just go back to the same reaction. If you've been watching all these videos for uh, kinetics and uh, for reaction rate and equilibrium, I'm using my hydrogen and my iodine again to make two moles of hydrogen iodide gas. So if I were gonna write the K value for this, I would put my HI, and I'm just gonna say that we're doing a concentration, which is C. Some of you may have to move on to something called KP, but for right now, let's just say it's concentration. That's what the C stands for. And then I'm gonna square that value, that's important. And then the denominator would be H2, and then normally we don't put the one, and we would multiply that by I2, okay? And again, this would be constant at a specific temperature. So these are just some numbers that I'm gonna use for my experiment number one that work out to get us a specific uh, value, and you will need a calculator now. So what I'm gonna do is grab my calculator, kind of press that down here, and then I'm gonna write these numbers in here below uh, my concentration here. So let me see if I can fit all this in the same frame here. 
So for my equilibrium constant at this temperature, I'm going to say like 400 some degrees, the hydrogen concentration is 0.1, the iodine is 0.2, and the HI is 1.04. I always like to start with the, the numerator, so 1.04. And we don't usually put the unit in. A lot of times K values, we leave them as unit lists. So we say squared. First time in the chemistry, you probably can leave the units out. Uh, most time the answer for that is no. And then 0.2. And I'm just going to keep the sig figs there. So we kind of have two sig figs in these. So that's all we can do with the calculation in the end. So we pull this aside and see what we get. So you're going to take 1.04 and you can square it or um, sometimes I just like to just multiply it by itself. So 1.04, it's kind of a lazy trick for me, but that works for me. It's the same, net, same answer. And then divided by 0.1, I just do these separate. And otherwise, you're going to need parentheses with this calculator. So I get basically 54. I know it's with significant figures. So that, again, is the equilibrium constant for this reaction at, we'll say, again, we're saying around 427 or 430-ish, okay? So what this means is people would say that this favors uh, products at equilibrium. And why I'm saying that is because the K value is greater than 1. So my products are more prevalent concentration-wise overall, um, and especially because of the squared part, too, but the products are favored at equilibrium. All right, let's run an experiment number two, but I'm not changing the temperature, and this is going to be called kind of like another equilibrium position, so I have different concentrations. I have not changed the temperature, and I have not changed the experiment, so I'm trying to give you a hint as to what we should find out here if these numbers work out. So we're going to put 1.47 in the numerator, and then 0.2 for both in the denominator. So notice how the concentrations have changed, okay, for this experiment, but it's the same reaction, hint, hint, at the same temperature. So times 1.47, again, my little lazy way to basically square something, divided by 0.2, divided by 0.2, and voila, you get pretty much 54 again. And so it still favors products. And the reason why this hasn't changed is because I have the same reaction at the same temperature. Pressure, which means I should have a constant K value. So K should be constant. That's why it's called an equilibrium constant. But here's the deal. I have to have the same reaction and I have to have it at the same temperature. This will be important when you get to Le Chatelier's principle. All right, so we could do this with a lot of different numbers. In fact, you could even pick new numbers and you know make it a challenge as to give other numbers that would give us basically 54 as the uh, K value, as long as we keep this temperature the same. All right, so like same temperature. All right, let's try one more. What if you had to maybe solve for something like in, in the equation or in, in it? So maybe we know the K value. So for example, in this question, maybe we know the K value is uh, that, okay? So again, it's favoring product production, which is ethanol. So kind of review some molecules here. This is ethanol, and this is called ethene, if you have to do some organic naming later. And this one's easy, you get water, or dihydrogen monoxide. So it's just basically water reacting with ethene in an equilibrium, it's dynamic, meaning that it's reversible and it'll come to some equilibrium position where it'll stay constant. Let's just write the uh, equation though. So, or write the, you know, the equilibrium expression is what a lot of people call this, equilibrium expression. Maybe I'll even write that word down here. This is called the equilibrium, that's the equilibrium constant. But what I'm writing right here, I'm just gonna put a little arrow, is called the equilibrium expression. Just so you don't get kind of quite spelled wrong today. I've been doing a lot of spelling mistakes. Expression. I had one uh, video I made today that had a lot of spelling errors, but I'm moving on. So then, and then you're going to have your uh, products over your reactants. That's well, kind of messy. I'll write it again below anyway. Okay. All right. So if this is our KC, let me just put it one more time because it looks a little messy up there. So C2H5OH is our product. That's the ethanol concentration of that divided by our concentration of our ethene and our water. And it's a gas, so we can have a concentration. That seems kind of weird for most people. But you can for gaseous water. And then we're going to put in these numbers. So we have 0 0.020 for the um, ethene. And we have 0 0.015 for the water. And then we don't know the top part. Um, but you could solve for it if they tell you the 
K value. Again, at this specific temperature, whatever it is, okay? Looks like we're gonna say it's at 300 some. So it's just basically cross multiplying, kind of reminds you a little bit sometimes of the gas laws if you've gone through them. So we're gonna take 9.0 times 10 to the three, and then we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.020. So we're bringing this up and then 0 0.015. So we're basically multiplying both sides by that. And what do we get? So let's check it out. And this would be our equilibrium concentration um, of your ethanol. So nine and then second EE, that would be the only thing I would say I would you know, do that, which basically gives you 9,000 and then times 0 0.02. And then times, I like to do my separate calculations. I just do. There we go. And we get 2.7. So we get 2.7. Now, this is where you do want to tack back on the unit of molarity, okay? So C2H5, the ethanol's concentration at equilibrium is 2.7 uh, molar. And we have solved that problem with a little mistake in there for another spelling error that I've had today. All right, so I hope that helps. I'm just gonna put these back kind of backwards. So here again was the practice problem before that, where again, you can have different concentrations that still give you the same equilibrium constant, as long as we have the same temperature and as long as we have the same reaction. And it all started from what is an equilibrium constant, kind of the law of mass action, where you have the products over reactants, uh, and you can kind of have three different positions of those, whether they're kind of equal or whether they're favoring your products or favoring kind of, this would be called favoring your reactants. There actually are some cool graphs you could draw along, along with these if you'd like, um, but in this video, I want to keep it kind of short, sweet, to the point, just all about the equilibrium constant and how to calculate it. Good luck, chemists!